We're getting ready to do some cycle recording. In this lesson, I'm going to build the drum loop and set up the other tracks for recording. Let's begin by importing a file that I'll use for my drum loop. Let's go to File, Import, Audio File, and double click on the file I want. Let me change my primary display to bars and beats. And now let's have a playback. Let's stop playback. Zoom in a bit. As you can see here, my sample is about 11 bars long. In order to record along with this and loop it, I need to sort out my time signature and tempo right now. I can already tell from listening to this pattern that it's in 4-4, but it's definitely slower than 120. How can I figure out what the tempo is? If I loop it now and change the fixed tempo later on, the events are going to shuffle around in the project window to accommodate that change. We need to sort out the tempo now, and this is going to determine the tempo for the rest of the recording. Let's have a listen to what 120 beats per minute sounds like. In order to hear the click track during playback, let's control click or command click on the pre-click button. The metronome setup window opens. Let's cancel out of this window. We can also get to this dialog window from the transport menu. Just scroll down to metronome setup. Currently, metronome in record is checked. Let's also check metronome in play. This will give us clicks during playback as well. Use count bass is checked, set to 1 8. Let's change it to 1 over 4. The arrows on the right are how you modify the beat subdivisions, and the arrows on the left are how you modify the number of beats per bar. I've also got one bar of pre count clicks opted for. Let's change that to 2. Let's change the pitch of the high beep as well. I'm going to raise the pitch a little bit. I'll just drag this slider up. Raise the level as well for the volume. Let's click OK. Now we should be able to hear our metronome during playback, so let's try it out. Press play. And let's stop our playback. We didn't hear the clicking. There's a reason for that. Click on the transport panel needs to be toggled on. Let's also go to VST Connections, to the Outputs tab. Let's ensure that click is toggled on here. F4 will close the window and return to zero. Now let's try this again. Press the spacebar to start playback. OK, let's stop playback. As you can hear, 120 is definitely too fast. Well, Cubase provides us a way to calculate our tempo. Let's return to zero. And let's check out the beat calculator. We get to it from the project option on the main menu and scroll down to beat calculator. The beat calculator gives us a way to tap along with our playback to calculate the tempo. First, we need to choose the correct number for the beat subdivision. Start the playback. Tap Tempo. Click OK and stop playback. Let's toggle Click Off now. Return to zero and try it again without the click track. We need to start the playback before we click the Tap Tempo button. We can't launch playback once the second dialog window is open. Let's click OK to exit, and let's select our event. Shift-G will loop it. Tap Tempo. OK and stop playback. Looks like it's about 95 beats per minute. Here are some options for inserting our tempo into the tempo track. We can also insert it to the start of the current selected event. Let's close the beat calculator. Instead, we're going to insert this tempo as a fixed tempo right in the transport panel. And that'll work out for me since there's no tempo change in this piece. And this concludes our lesson about the beat calculator. 
In our next lesson, we'll be further preparing this project for cycle recording. First, we're going to loop the groove into a drum loop, and we'll see you in just a minute.